Welcome to another episode of Conversation and Cocktails with your host, me, Lenny B. In this episode, we speak to May from the UK, a.k.a. Mayhem. May is a hardcore fan from the UK. She books shows, she writes a column, and we sat down, we spoke about a whole bunch of different shit, and had a great time. So, without further ado, roll that fucking footage. Hi, May. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How was your flight uh, from the UK? It was, it, I got upgraded. So, I, it was very good. Cheeky bastard. How did yeah. you get upgraded? Just they said hello? No, I, um, because I've got an Arabic name, I generally get searched quite a lot when I go through <laughs> airports. And so, um, and I'm not a very good flyer anyway. So, I um, was hysterically crying because I have these images when I'm on a plane yeah. that, like, if I, the, only when I go over the Atlantic, because my fear is the plane crashes and you survive. So, not only have you gone through a crash, you're going to drown as well. So I, I was a bit hysterical. And then when they started searching me, I just lost my mind. I was like, why do I always... It's only on American Airlines. I never right. get searched. Like, British Airways never bother me. American Airlines, every single time. But, and then I think because I was... They saw how upset I was. They oh, oh, that's... I think that so was... So it, it worked out to your advantage, but it's not fair. No, uh, it really isn't. Like, it's, you know... I, like, when I go away with people they're always like you always get stopped at security always I'm like yeah I'm just so when you now. when you leave where are you leaving LaGuardia or JFK uh JFK you're probably going to get oh yeah probably get. yeah no I'm not I'm, I'm pretty sure that was that's gonna happen it, it's funny I remember the first time I flew it actually was to go to Europe and for, I've never had been on a plane yeah. before so I was like okay so I was hanging out at my friend's house over in Park Slope before we left I you know and I sat there I got shit faced yeah I, Smoked a ton of weed, drank a lot of fucking booze, and you know I got searched on the way into the point they made me remove my pants. Oh wow! You know, but I also probably reeked of weed yeah. and alcohol. Yeah. Didn't help. You know, this is you know it was bad fucking news. But and then for some reason, every time because I you know I f flew basically between like I flew back from like uh, Amsterdam to Gatwick, and then you know took took a, a train down or whatever and got searched, you know, in Amsterdam and got searched again off that plane. Yeah. Got, they they ripped my they ripped my bag apart once I got they saw like Amsterdam, huh? It was like, yeah, you know, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like it, it is what it is. It's just you know, back in the day people could literally bring anything on the plane. Oh yeah. You know, I, I've known many of people who've brought a lot of things on the plane. They just didn't give a fuck. Yeah. Now they got the fancy new thing with the uh you go in the little booth. Yeah. You know. The little search. Yeah, like, yeah. Like we're sniffing for explosives and or drugs. Yeah. Not like you're sniffing for fucking explosives. Yeah. Like. It's like that's the thing. I'm like I'm like a five foot one little girl, and yeah. I'm obviously like, you know, I don't wear hijab. I don't like I'm not. Yeah, you. You wouldn't like unless you asked. You wouldn't know. Yeah. I'm but Muslim, but you're very but like, proud of it though. Yeah. You're, of course you're proud of your heritage. You wouldn't try to hide it. Oh no, you know, I no, never no. ever. Like that's the thing. I'm very very proud of being Arabic, and I'm very very proud of being Muslim as well. So it's kind of you know. I mean the thing is, I never used to tell people I was. So like one of my friends, Rachel Floyd. Yeah. She she didn't know for ten years that I was, and it's only since what's been happening now I tell people because I'm like, look, we're all normal. <laughs> Like, yeah. it, we're not, like, you, you've you got this idea in your head, and that's not what we're like. We're not, you know, we're just, we're trying to get by every day. It's not like a, you know, it's gotten worse in the last couple of years. I mean, we we talked about this before, the word packy. Yeah. I mean, is, you said that makes your blood... It, yeah, it makes my blood boil. I can't, like, if anyone says that around me, I just lose my mind. And that's the thing about being an Arabic, as well, and an Arabic, being Arab as well. Yeah is that like we have very we have very strong tempers yeah. and we tend to you know i curb mine quite a lot i'm quite a happy person but you know if someone uses that word around me it's just like no just get out of my face well please. it's you know i mean besides it being a derogatory term it's like all right it's like so anyone from the asian yeah anyone that's brown continent basically, yeah. Anyone, basically yeah. is a packy yeah you anyone know? that's brown is a packy and it's just you know? like oh my god please and like that's usually my argument is if you're going to be a racist twat, then, like, actually get the, the, the area of the world I'm from right? Because there are so many bad Arab slurs that you could use. Yeah. Like, why are you using the one that is just, like, it's like a, you know, the easy go-to word? All right, well, let me ask you this. Um, you know, the burqa. Yeah. You know, I mean, 
how do you feel about I know it's part of a religion, but do you also feel that it's also sort of... I think the burqa is too much, personally. Yeah. I think that, because we're not, as Muslims, we're meant to wear hijab. Yeah. But the burqa, I think, is just taking it too far, especially when you're, like, living somewhere like England or America. or I think it's, you don't need to do that. It's not, it's very extreme in my mind. I just think it's like, and you're bringing attention onto yourself more than you need to. It's kind of, it's too much for me. Do, do you think it degrades women? No, not at all. You know? Like, I don't, I think a lot of the hijab, especially as well, yeah. I think a lot of people have this idea that, that pe women are forced to wear hijabs, but all the Muslim girls that I know that wear hijabs, have they chose to do it themselves. Yes. They want to do it themselves. So, and they kind of, you know, it's kind of, it's modesty. It's just a modest thing that, like, because you're meant to wear a hijab and then you're not meant to wear sleeveless tops. So, like, yes. anything under, it's got to be under the elbow and, Obviously, not show any legs or whatever. So, so you're a terrible Muslim. I'm the worst. <laughs> the worst Muslim. <laughs> Always the worst Muslim. But you know. <laughs> when, it, when the generalizations that people come at you with, I'm sure is like, oh, so do your parents own a shop? Yeah, yeah. It's you like, know? what do you, what do your parents do? And I'm like, this is the thing. My dad has, um, my dad has. If anyone's racist to my dad, he's brilliant. He just sits there and he goes. I made your people walk. I fixed people so that they could walk. And usually that's kind of like, okay, the guys usually just turn around and like, oh, okay, yeah. It sounds like he's actually a real pisser. He is. He's yeah. like, he, my dad's brilliant. He's, he's incredible. He just like, he's very, you know, he doesn't take things very seriously, which is nice. Because like when my parents moved to England, yeah. it, was, it was in the 70s. And it was, you know, where they, as I was saying earlier, where they moved to the Isle of Wight, it was very very secular and backwards and like even now like I well that's know. kind of living yeah. in the country yeah exactly you know yeah, yeah. i mean it's it's a very rural type setting you yeah. know it's farmland yeah. it's a lot of rolling hills yeah stone cottages yeah. and little little you know little towns yeah and whatever it's like you know I, like i said i'm very familiar with england now quick question the class system in england it's not that big a thing as it is here like, I think you guys have, because you, what I see in America, I don't think you guys have a middle class. You're either working class or you're very rich. You don't yeah. kind of have in We the middle... do, the thing is, the, mi the it's skewed. Yeah. It, the, the middle class thing is skewed because, like, I grew up in a working class family. Yeah. I consider myself middle working class. Yeah. You know, I, I use my hands for a yeah. living. I am a blue collar guy. I'm yeah. not a white collar guy. I don't work in an office. I could never work in an office. Yeah. I tried it. Wasn't, <laughs> wasn't suited for it. Um, I don't like people telling me what to do. And yeah. I, I can tell my boss on my job to go fuck himself. Yeah. You know, and he goes, he looks at me like, I was like, yeah, I totally, yeah, go, yeah. I totally go fuck yourself. Guess what? You can go fuck yourself. And, it, and it's my God-given right as what I do. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the middle class thing, it's kind of broken up into different things. You do have the extremely rich people, yeah. but you have people who think they are rich. Yeah. And we, they're rich, but they're house poor. Yeah. They have a very expensive apartment that they're mortgaged to the hilt on. Yeah. You know, they're, they're paying more than they need to pay, which is... Terrible because housing should not cost as much as it does. No, no. And and we were talking earlier about how the housing in in England, especially in, you in know London, in London yeah, it's, especially, it's has gotten disgusting. Yeah. You know, um, and it's the same thing here. You're you go. What am I? What am I fucking? You know, I'm gonna get me stuck in a twenty year mortgage yeah. that is just with the interest rate will never be paid off properly. No. You know, it's always going to be. Whatever, I know people, like I said, I know people who live in very nice buildings and they're paying mortgages. Then they have Ikea furniture. Yeah. You know, they have, it's like, it's like set up as a college or university yeah. dorm room where you go, you know, like, really, guy? Yeah. You know, like, it's like, this is, uh, this is fucked up. <laughs> you know, no food in the fridge. Okay, yeah, I exactly. see how you're going. That's the thing, yeah. Like, you, well, I call, I, I call them fake Arabs. So, like, Arabs generally, on the whole, like to buy a lot of very expensive things. I'm not, this is where my, the stereotype of an Arab doesn't suit me. Yeah, Arab money. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. I would never spend 400 pounds on a bag because I, I'm, I would be too scared to even take it out. I'd be like, I've yeah. just spent, like, half of my, you know, well, not the half, but, like, a big portion of my monthly wage to 
to buy this silly bag. But like a lot of Arab women will do that, where they'll just they don't have the money, yeah. but they will pay excessive amounts for lots of things that they don't really need, just to show off more than anything. I saw. Uh, funny enough, I was speaking of British television. Yeah. I was of that stereotype. It's funny enough. Uh, Love thy neighbor. Yeah. Um, and it it's basically our version of uh, All in the Family, Archie yeah. Bunker, yeah. essentially. And they did the Arab stereotype where a guy came in, he had, you know, he had a turban on, he was a Sikh, yeah. you know. But that it, to to people, you know, I know the difference between a Sikh yeah. and an Arab and a Muslim, yeah. you know, and because usually Sikhs are Hindus, yeah. uh, you know. But the generalization, anyway, you know, a guy had a, you know. The Sikh had a very hard time, like, pronouncing things, you yeah. know, like, you know, like, he, he's like, I, you know, I want mouse. He's like, yeah. and he's like, you have to go to a pet shop, mate. Yeah. And, you know, and it was like, we were talking about moose. Yeah. And so, you know, guys across the counter's given thing. He puts a stack of money on the counter, the, Arab, the yeah. Sikh, and you're just like, and he's like, oh, sir, you know, like, like, automatically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and at the end of the day, he bought, like, like five things and he charged him, like, 300 quid. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's know? insane, it's like, yeah. Right, it, again, it's a stereotype, but it, 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 it's basically our version of the Archie Bunker, yeah. all the family thing. And I was like, wow, I didn't know this really existed. Yeah. I mean, but I also find, you know, like my first thing, like, you know, some people are going to hate me for this. I don't like Doctor Who. Yeah, you know? oh, I, I don't like Doctor Who. Yeah, I don't like I, I, yeah, but um, I used to watch Who's Minding the Store. Yeah. I used to love Who's Minding the Store. Uh, there was a few other little things. Of obviously, watching reruns of the uh, Grey Whistle Test yeah. because you could see some fantastic, yeah. old school performances. You know, that's how I found out about uh, Doctor Feelgood. Yeah. Not the Motley Crue Doctor Feelgood. Yeah. Pub, pub rock band. <laughs> um, and I was just like, like, wow, these guys are fucking. These guys look like they're fucking speeded out of their yeah. minds, playing a hundred <laughs> miles an hour. It's like proto punk almost. Um. But yeah, like I said, I'm sure you've gotten that. Like, oh, you know, what, what shop does your parents own? Yeah, and like we get like, you know, and I'm just a bit like, well, actually, my parents, have, you know, my parents came from nothing. They pretty much like... They're self-made. You know, yeah, they're pretty much, they worked, they worked their whole lives to, you know, so that they could live in their old age comfortably and, you know. They still work? Uh, no, my dad stopped working about four years ago. So uh -huh. um, now they're kind of, you know, he's, he's nearly 70 now. And because my dad's a surgeon, he has a thing about he always says this to me he goes never ever be operated on by someone that's over the age of 65 because your hands aren't as steady you're not like at least he's truthful about yeah it. he's like he's like once he was 65 he's just stopped doing surgeries because he's like i can't you know i'm old now i don't want to be you know making mistakes that i could avoid so he worked he did clinics so he's an orthopedic, oh, he's an orthopedic surgeon so he would just do clinics okay. before he retired and then and then he retired at the ripe old age of like 66 or something how did uh, how did you find growing up in England, being a, a an Arab, being a Muslim? Like when I was younger, it's like this is the thing. I, when I used to tell people there is racism because they wouldn't see it, they'd be like, no, there isn't. England doesn't have a race. I'm like, England definitely has a problem. There is like. You know, it goes to any football match in England, and it's a bit like, uh, you know what the hell? Well, I yeah, I, 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 that's a whole different. Yeah, that's a whole different thing. I mean, I think football matches have seemed like they have calmed down, especially. Oh yeah, they, much yeah. They, like, they've taken away the terraces, yeah. and they, you know, it's more yeah, seating after, now. Yeah, after Hillsborough, they yes, had to. Yes. Was, yeah. You know, I mean, it seems like it's calmed down, but you sit down and uh, like, you know, everyone loves a good chant. Yeah, yeah. And and I hate to say, it, you know. Uh, the brubs like to, uh, yeah. you know, they like a good chant. The really, the, the really funny thing now is one of the biggest players in the English Premier League is an uh, Arab called Mohamed Salah, Mo Salah, and he plays for Liverpool, and he's, he's a dream to watch. Like, he's such a good football player. I don't support Liverpool, by the way. I'm Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that out there. But he's, he's incredible. And so now they're... Um, the Liverpool fans have all these pro-Muslim chants, which, are, which is incredible. It's, it, which you would never have seen 10 years ago. It would never happen. It would never happen. Yeah, like I said, I know from this, when I, here's a funny little story. Yeah. I, uh, when I traveled up to England, we drove down to Brighton Pier. Yeah. And it was me and Sam Hauser from Rockstar. Hi, Sam, if you're watching. <laughs> and a friend of ours. And it was a bunch of 
Scottish guys on a stag. Yeah. Which is a... Uh, like a bachelor party. A bachelor yeah. party, uh, you know, and I don't remember what they were singing, but I could not understand a fucking word. And uh, I know plenty of Scottish guys, and, you know, when they're wrecked, they're... Oh, yeah, they're really... And, and, and Sam comes up, he's like, keep it back to the wall. And I'm like, why? He's like, just keep it back to the wall. They're a little fucking out of their minds right yeah. now. And uh, <laughs> I was, like, watching it, and just watching uh, guys sing, like, all by myself, but, like, but, but in a chanting style, and you're no, just like... This is terrible. Yeah. But this is amazing, and I think I'm slightly scared for my life yeah. right now. Because, you know, and they're like, they come by, they shove a beer in your hand. And it's like, oh, you know, hey, oh. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Is he like, speaking English? It's like, yeah, he is actually. It's like, it's like, did you understand? It's like every fucking word. And oh, like, my oh. God. Yeah. I like, was like, am I all right? He's like, you're all right. <laughs> you know, but, um, Scots are a whole different ball. Game. Oh yeah, like that's the thing. I, I, you know, I, I love the Scottish. I, I think they're they're brilliant, but they are very, very hard to understand when they're drunk. And I'm yeah. just like, I'm like, what did you say? And they have to repeat everything. Like even, you know, generally, like they just, it's kind of hard to because they talk so quickly as well. The yeah. Scottish accent and the, just the way they talk is so fast. You're like, huh? What would you say? Huh? Well, it's, and it's super strong as well. Yeah, so. well, it's not for nothing. It's just kind of like here in America, you know, you have like Northeast accent, yeah. you know, like New Yorker accent, then you have the Boston accent. Yeah. Then, you know, as you go further, then you have the drawls, and it changes once you get Midwest, you have that Wisconsin, <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> thing. Uh, guys behave. Sorry, the animals are acting up. Um, and... Same thing, same thing with the UK. I noticed, like, you know, you go up into the Midlands. Yeah, you have and a Brummie you, accent. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and then you get that Liverpudlian accent, and then you get that Northern accent. The Newcastle accent is my favorite. I love it. You know, it's just... I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, some, somebody turned me on to these. I don't know why. I'm not a beer... I'm a liquor drinker. Yeah. And I was just like, these are actually all right. You probably like oh, shite. Yeah, uh, it doesn't smell very nice. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I've been, I enjoy a beer when now and then. Yeah. So, how did you find hardcore music? So, funny story. I think everyone that knows me knows this story because I go on about it all the time. So, there used to be a venue called the Astoria in London, and it was like the most amazing venue, but it's been knocked down now. Right. I was barred from the Astoria for like four years because I, I was stage diving. And like I used to outwit security, they used to have huge like monitors, like a p huge PA stacks, yeah. and they'd have curtains in front of the PA stacks. And I used to go in by the curtain and get on stage and just completely outwit. I like broke my nose a bunch of times because I never made the height enough. <laughs> and so I got misjudged. Yeah, like completely. Like when No Effects played, my nose just like I bumped back, back my head bounced off some guy's head, and it was like ah. <laughs> But um, I got so after I was barred, there was a gig happening, and one of my friends said, "Oh." you should go see Agnostic Front, I think you'd really like him. And I was like, okay, cool, because since I can't go to the gig at this story, I might as well go Well, there. what were you watching, what type of music were you going to the story for? And, it's sort of punk and, and like you know, metal and, and yeah, okay. metal and stuff. And like, it was a lot, it was, you know, the story is like a, a it was a big venue, it was like 1,000 Yeah, I actually am yeah. familiar with it. Yeah, yeah it's, it was the, the best, it's so sad that it's been knocked down. But, um, so I, I was 17 at the time, I had no money, I was broke as hell, yeah. and I turned up to the garage where Agnostic Front were playing, and just went up to the first guy with a laminate and said, is there any chance you could get me and I, ha I don't have enough money to get into the show today? And I was, I was a fucking mouthy little, like, when I was like, I'd just like ask everyone, I was like, if you don't ask, you don't get. So That's actually a good philosophy, I have, yeah. the, same, I have the same thing, it's like, you know, I was like, if you don't ask, you won't know. Exactly. Like, exactly. What, they'll tell you no. Yeah. I have. Yeah. A, I look at it, it's a 50-50. Yeah. I like those odds. So um, it turned out to be Vinny Stigma, who then said, if you don't, like, took me in, introduced me to everyone. And there was a guy called Paul, and the Vision were playing as well. And it was Vision, Maximum Penalty, um, Morning Again, and Agnostic Front. It was, like, the best lineup. It wow. was so that's good. A, that's a pretty good yeah, lineup. Yeah, it was so good. But, um... So this guy from Vision, Paul, like, got one of the um, snare drum heads yeah. and got everyone in the band to sign it because he's like, you, you, you're going to remember this. This is your first proper hardcore show. Because like, yeah. I've seen, like, Biohazard and stuff. But, like, when they would play, it would be more of a metal thing than it was a 
than like, like a hardcore punk show. It wasn't yeah. like. Yeah, Paul's a friend of mine on Facebook, yeah. by the way. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. So like, so I still have this like drum head on on my wall, and it's like it's been signed by everyone. But um, and then Vinnie bought uh, gave me some of his dinner, which was very nice. So I call him my Uncle Vinnie now, and everyone's just like every time I see him, I'm like Uncle Vinnie. Well, Vin, uh, Stigma is always is very generous. Oh, person. he's brilliant. He yeah. he he is a very generous person. I've I've had some fun moments with Stigma. I've yeah. actually been to a wedding with Stigma, which seeing Stigma in a suit is pretty. Awesome. Pretty, yeah. pretty hysterical. It's like, it's like, wow, stigma's cleaned up, you yeah. know. I mean, except for the little neck tattoos that you see. Yeah. You would never notice. I'm like, wow, look at you, stigma. Yeah. Like, oh, you like my fucking soap kid, you know? He fucking I love calls everyone him. kid. Yeah. Um, yeah, Vin Vinny's good people, but that that's awesome. Yeah. So like, I remember going home and I said to my brother, who's like two years younger than me, I was like, oh my god, it was because he used to come to metal shows with me. I was like, it's so good, and he looked at me and went. Oh, you're a hardcore chick now, huh? <laughs> like, you're one of those cool hardcore kids. And I was just like, oh, get lost. And he like, he the, the funny thing was a year later he joined. He was like, he got into hardcore and he joined a band. And, and like, I was like, oh, now you're a hardcore kid too, huh? <laughs> but that's that's interesting. You know, you hardcore is a very interesting little community because yeah. you 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 know. I, Hardcore, unfortunately, is also a lot like high school yeah. to a degree. But at the same time, you know, you fall in with the right people. You know, you, you know like for me, I can transcend almost any line yeah. in it. And, you know, because I've been in bands before and, you know, I've paid my dues yeah. where, like, I'll disappear for a year, come back. And yeah. it's like nothing. You're like, hey, yeah, yeah. you've been. You know, but it's also it can be very high schoolish. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, the rumor mill and the, all the the other thing being you know and we I spoke about this before all right hold on Michelle edit here <laughs> I gotta look does Michelle do all the editing yes, for she you? Does. she's amazing she does all the editing she we well, I got I got eight minutes before I have to fucking just flip the uh, thing um we talked about this before that you technically have three strikes against you um you know because first off You've you've booked shows. Yeah. Uh, you've written for. I write for magazines you, and stuff. You, yeah. Uh, Down for life, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Um, my friend Chris Wynn also writes for yeah. from In Effect. Uh, and so you're you're a, a girl, excuse me, woman. Yeah. You're a woman who who is involved in the booking and the writing. Yeah. But then you're also you know Arab yeah. and Muslim. Yeah. Which you don't see a lot of. Yeah. You know, like I remember you posted something about like. Oh, the Indian girl sh yeah. showed up. Yeah, uh, she's like amazing. She's amazing. There's a, she's a little girl. I'm friends with her now, but she like she turns up to shows. And the thing is, like, especially like even in like metal and kind of it, being we, you realize how much of a mon minority you are when you're in like one of those venues. Like, there, I've been to shows where I would be the only person that isn't white there. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of, it never usually bothers me. There there have been certain shows where I've been like, generally like, it, you know, not to give UK punk a bad name, but generally if you go to, I love Cox Sparrow more than anything in the world. I think they're brilliant. And I've interviewed them. They're awesome guys, but their fan base is a bit sketchy. Yeah. So we, I went to see them a couple of months ago in Brighton and, um, there was just, like, I went with my very pregnant friend as well. She was, like, you know, ready to drop any minute. And there were just, like, at one point, some guy had been, like, shooting me daggers for so long <laughs> that I just looked at him and waved at him. And he was just, <laughs> like, my friend's like, what are you doing? I was like, he won't stop staring at me. Like, he wants to kill me, so I'm just waving at him because he, he's not going to be able to do anything. And this is the thing, it's all talk. So then what I do to piss them off is I sing England Belongs to Me louder yeah. than anyone in the venue. Oh, my God. I'm just like, get, go right you, into the you, middle. You're, you're, like, you're the salt in the wound type of yeah, person. Like, 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 let me twist a knife just a little. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you, you, you hate me for being here? Well, I'm going to be here and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be here and I'm going to be loud and proud. Of, like, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But, like, that's the thing. You don't, you don't really get a lot. Of a lot of people that are white into this sort of music. London is different because I imagine it's a lot like New York, where you have like a whole mixture of races coming to show. For the most part, yeah. yes. But like, if you go somewhere else, like I don't know, I went to show in Boston once. It was literally like. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I yeah. know. <laughs> literally. Just well, like, uh, when I was in Fahrenheit, I was the only white guy in the band. Yeah. Uh, you know, and when we would travel outside of you know the tri-state area, 
you would get those looks at yeah. the rest stops, you know. And we used to have the joke, you know, we'd go, let's say, into a store and it'd be like, we have two male Hispanics, uh, Caucasian, yeah. and a suspected male black, which Ray Green is Korean and black. Yeah. So, you know, and, you know, people would look like, what is Ray? It's like, oh, he's Korean black. Yeah. Because yeah, he'd have the dreads and everything. Yeah. And, and you would get that look and... It's a certain look. This is what I try to yeah, explain. Yeah, and I, I know the, I know the look you're talking yeah. about because I remember we Fahrenheit was known for smoking weed, yeah. copious amounts of weed. Yeah. And we would go to the show. We would play with nothing but straight edge bands, yeah. and we'd blow the dressing room up. Yeah. And these were bands, and I'm not going to mention the band's name because I don't want to ruin their reps. But I'm going to say this much: these were bands that were known to be militant straight edge. Yeah, kids. yeah. You know, be like, oh, they beat up people for drinking yeah. and smoking. It's like, oh, let's see them beat. Yeah. Let's see yeah. them beat us up. Yeah. And I think they were sort of afraid to challenge yeah. because it's like, all right, you're going to beat up some little suburban kid, but you're not beating up the Hispanic guys. You're yeah. not beating up the black guys. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you won't do that. You know, oh, but the, the little, the, you know, the little, you know, 120 pound kid who, yeah. you know, might be sneaking a beer or a cigarette. Yeah. You'll beat the shit out of him. No challenge. Yeah. You know, it's like all talk, go walk. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, get the fuck out of here. It, it just... You know. Like when we would, I went to see Sick of It All play with Wisdom and Chains in Stoke on Trent, and I went with Rachel Floyd, who I mentioned earlier. She's brilliant. Oh no, we're gonna talk about her in yeah. the second half. <laughs> There's a bunch of things we gotta have to get off our chest here. Um, but like she, um, we walked in to this venue, and there were men that were just like Stoke's very kind of backwards, and you know, I don't, I do not like Stoke on Trent at all. I think it's a horrible place. It's just. <laughs> terrible it's for terrible people i hate it but we walked in and these guys would like the, the bar would be empty and they would stand come they'd see me walking towards the bar they would stand in front of the bar so i couldn't get to the bar and get a drink and they then they'd shove me out the way and it's like the, the venue at this point was quite empty it wasn't like yeah it wasn't yeah. like it was just a crowd exactly yeah. yeah and so i was just like this is you know and rach turned to her husband and she went this is very German security guard in here. And she thought I didn't know what she was talking about, but like a lot of, when you go to like the bigger German fests, if you look really closely, some of the German security guards have quite sketchy tattoos. Yeah. They all a bit like, uh, don't know if I want him to catch me if I'm crowd surfing, <laughs> let me drop. Um, but like, so they did, these guys were doing this for about literally about half an hour. And then, because Wisdom and Jakes were playing, Joe came out. And like the minute Joe came out and gave me a hug, they they all looked into their beers, like wouldn't make eye contact with me. And I was like, well, oh, so you're like gonna you're gonna piss around with a girl that's five foot one, but you see the big black guy come in, and yeah. now you're not you're not such men anymore, are you? Yeah, and well, kinda, yeah. Joe, Joe's a big dude. Joe I mean, is Joe's huge. a big dude. He's a, he's a teddy bear. I love him. He's yeah. a teddy bear, but he is a, he is a big dude. Yeah. If you don't know Joe, you go like. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Joe to death. He's like one of my favorite humans on the planet. But it was just like, it's like, this doesn't need to happen. Like, and it's kind of, you know, it's when shit like that does happen, it just bums me out more than anything. It's like, I deserve to be here. I like, I've been doing shows since 1998. Like, yeah. I traveled from London to come to this show. Yeah. And Stoke's like about four or five hours away from London or something. And I was just like, I deserve to be here. You can't tell me where I should be and where I shouldn't be, or like my presence should not bother you. It's and it sometimes does, but you know I'm kind of annoying too though, so I just get louder and more blast and yeah. When like the more that they the more they try and like upset me, the the worse. That yeah, you, I'll be. I will be. Yeah. You act out. Yeah, I totally yeah. act out. If like if a guy is being racist, I will basically like do anything to ruin his life. Anything. <laughs> Europeans have. A tendency to travel all over Europe yeah. for shows where Americans, unless you're Jen Sawyer, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you, we, if we go to New Jersey, that's a road trip for us. Oh wow! You know, I mean, yeah. that's a, that's a road trip for us. Where I think New Yorkers are a little bit more spoiled because we do tend to get some really yeah. good shows coming through here. It is sort of a major hub. Yeah. But like, I, you know. You and your friend Rachel, who she's another, she's brilliant. She's just, yeah, she has, she's great. she has the best haircut. Yeah. She really does. Um, and how did you meet Rachel, by the way? Through the sick of it all message board. Really? <laughs> yeah. We used to like, when message boards were still a thing. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. We used to like, all of us, there were about 15 of us, and we're all still really good friends now. 
And like we we all we started talking. In fact, I think so sick of it all have this thing where they give everyone nicknames that yeah. they're close to. So my nickname, the, the first time I ever met Lou, I had loads of makeup on. I had like glitter eyeshadow, and yeah. I was like a kid. I was really young. And he was like, "You look like Rainbow Bright," and now they just call me Rainbow Bright. And so um, Rachel's ex-boyfriend made fun of my made fun of my nickname and called me Rainbow Shite. <laughs> and that's how me and Rachel met because I didn't like her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> it was like, oh, dick. His name was Worm. Worm, you can fuck off. <laughs> wow, wow, bringing the smoke. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you, you two, you, you have like a little set crew. It's mostly I see you two become close mates, and you just travel. Yeah. To different shows, and yeah. it's it's a, again it's a European thing because uh, Cohen. Yeah. You know he will travel to all over. The place to go see shows you go to yeah. Germany, you go fucking down to Italy, maybe yeah. you go up it's to so Amsterdam. Cheap, though, well, that's, that's the thing. thing. Yeah. I, that's another thing I was going to say. Airfare and, and the Eurostar, yeah. it is, you if you know how to plan and know how to book, you can really go there for pennies on the yeah. dollar. Where in America, for us to fly from like here to, let's say, Heathrow or Gatwick or whatever, you know, you're talking, you know, on the cheap side, six hundred dollars, <coughs> and you know, and that's not just you know talking about lodging. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of fucking money. Yeah. You know, and I think, I think it is also because Americans, we really don't get vacation days. Yeah. We, you know, that they said that we are overworked to yeah. a certain degree. Um, and Whereas in England, it's usually standard for at least twenty. Really. Yeah. 20 days of annual leave is standard. I get 29 because I've been working in the health service for like five years continuously. Wow, you bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a thing in my business. You take off as much as you can afford. Yeah. You, you, they, you don't get technical, in construction, you don't get yeah. technical vacation days, but as if you need time off, take it. Yeah. You know, but you're not getting any type of money for yeah. taking it. You know, you better have money on the side or whatever for it and... You know, it just, we don't get that. Here. Yeah. We don't get that here. So I think that's why a lot of, there are Americans who do travel yeah. and, and whatever, but then there's a lot of us who don't. Yeah. You know, and, and I, like I said, I'll, let's talk a little about Jen Sawyer because she goes on these solo trips to yeah. all over the world and you're like, it's like, oh, I'm in Indonesia for a week and yeah. like, I'm staying by myself. I'm just going around. And that's what I do though. I generally like go on holiday alone. I don't. Because I like having the freedom of being able to just do what I want. Like, at Fair all enough, times, that yeah. makes sense. Because, you know, if you're, like, like with these trips, my, I come to Black and Blue every year. Because yeah. I, love, I love Black and Blue. I think, yeah. it's like, I think those guys are amazing. And there's always such a good time. Like, I, I've never, I, I went to one that I was like, you know, some, some guy threw up in my hair. It was all very <laughs> odd. It was a very bizarre day. Gorilla Biscuits were playing and then my like Tiffany ring broke and it was all terrible. But other than that, they generally put on a great show. Uh, the drop in your hair. He was, I saw him, it was at Webster Hall and I saw him running to the toilets and I was like, that guy's gonna see his hand on his mouth. Oh, so he was holding uh, it yeah, in. Yeah, he was holding it in and then he obviously threw up in his mouth because it just sprayed out of his, <laughs> and I happened to be sitting next to him. And I was just, and he'd obviously just eaten burgers as well, because it just tastes, my hair smelled of fried food. It was horrible. Oh my God. It was horrible. I never want that to happen to me again. So now if I, anyone looks like they're going to throw up, I'm a bit like, yeah, you can just go over there somewhere, please. Yeah, but like I said, guys, travel. I mean, you got, I, you know, you and, and the rest of your crew have made it to many black and blue bowls. Yeah. And you're just like... Wow, Europeans travel. They yeah. travel. You travel a lot. And yeah. It's just like it, it's a fortune because I think some Americans could actually learn something or two yeah. by by getting out of their area. Most people, I think, statistically speaking, they don't leave their. Most people don't won't even leave their state. Yeah. You know, they they live their whole lives in their one state, and I'm yeah. like, I mean, I at least got to see forty of the fifty when yeah. I went on tour. You know, I learned a lot about America and I learned you know America could be very ugly yeah you know especially when you're a white guy traveling with you know Hispanic and black guys and you're just like 
really? Yeah. This is how yeah. it goes. I mean, and it is what it is, but you're going to get that, you know, just like you said, you know, sketchy German guys with, yeah. you know, with, 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 with questionable tattoos. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, like, going back to that Cox Barrow show, as long as they don't actually physically, like, hurt me, I don't care. Like, you can hate me as much as you want. Like, yeah. it's not, it's not a thing. It, once you start ramming into me or standing in my way where I'm trying to get somewhere, it's, it, it, that just pisses me off. It's like, why are you doing that? You, just because I know you want to beat me up, but you're not going to be able to beat me up because I'm a little girl. Yeah. And generally, you know, it's like, and it's only the, the bad 5%, and you'll only get that in shows like that. Whereas here, I, like, I have some friends that are like into hardcore, but are also Trump supporters. Which is bizarre to me, because yeah. when I first went to hardcore, it's like all about educating yourself about the world, about like, you know. Well, I think they on. look at it as it's their quote unquote freedom of choice. Yeah, of course. You know, it's their freedom of choice, and uh, you know what? When and I don't need to talk politics on this, guys, and I'm rather not. But let me put it this way: when Trump got elected, there were a lot of people said, "Oh, well, if you voted for Trump, defend me," and. The thing is that there are certain people who speak out in a negative way about yeah. things, but at the same time, that's your choice. I respect that you made that choice. Yeah. Right or wrong, I'm not going to argue with you about your choice. I'm not going to sit there and have a debate about it. There are people, there are friends of mine that we will ramble on about politics yeah. and we'll ramble on about social injustices and stuff. But those are a few people. Other people, I will. That, yeah. Ne it never comes up just because I don't want to open that door yeah, with them. Yeah. Yeah. Because I could, I see the glimmer in their eye, like, ooh, yeah. this is gonna be a seven-hour conversation that's yeah. gonna go bad. It's it's gonna go where I'm either punching someone or someone's punching me, yeah. and we won't speak to each other. It's like, you know, let's just yeah. let's keep the politics and the fucking religion off the fucking table. That's the thing. I generally, as I said, I like Rach didn't know I was Muslim for ten years because I just don't talk about it. I'm not the sort of person, but because everything that's going wrong with this world and the perception of Muslims now, I've been more vocal about it. Well, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it. Like I said, you just, you know, not not all Arabs are terrorists. Yeah. Not all Muslims are terrorists. Yeah. You know that. You know what it. It's like this. There's good and bad. Yeah. In every race and religion. Yeah. And there always will be. Yeah. You know. And like the funny thing is, is like if if Islam was at war with America, England, whatever. Well, depending and, on who you talk to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like if if that was the case, then it's like, okay, there are one point three billion Muslims. Yeah. On the planet, if we were pissed off and we wanted to start a war and we all got together. Yeah. You know about it. Yeah. It's like not all of us are like crazy yeah. shitheads. It's. Well, it's, it's kind of like the militia type yeah. people, you know, it's the same thing, you know, or, or the or the Christian right people, yeah. so to speak, where it's like, you know, you know, you know, you shouldn't have an abortion because of yeah. all, and it's like, listen, what a woman does with her body is not my exactly. fucking business, yeah, yeah. you know, you, that's, that's on, excuse me, that's on you. Yeah. If you want to have that, you know, on you, I understand it, it's not my right to say that. Yeah. It's not my right to say it. Well, that's, you know, that's, I work in a children's hospital and it's kind of like, it's kind of like one of those things where you're like, well, what if this lady that need, wanted to have her child avoided? What if they, because you see so many sick kids, I see so many sick kids all the time. Like, what if there, there would be an extra burden on her? If she couldn't, for whatever reason, yeah. she had the ab abortion. And if she kept the child and the child was sick, it would make her life even you know, more difficult. Well, I, I also feel, though, with the UK compared to America, your social services are, oh, yeah. are, are leaps and bounds over ours, yeah. you know, where... You know, they'll they'll try to get you a job. Yeah. You know, like legitimately try instead of just saying, oh, "All right, get on welfare," and yeah. then people just abuse that system. Yeah. Oh, and, they do and, get people that abuse. Oh, the yeah, system. I'm sure yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. But they they don't. There's really not a lot of job placement type yeah. of activities here. Um, our our attempt at at you know free medicine is atrocious at best yeah you know like, I just, it's bizarre like the whole your this is the only reason i love america yeah i love i love being here but the only reason i would never move here is because i'm clumsy as hell and oh, i like you're gonna I, spend a lot of time in hospital yeah exactly yeah. and i'm like i'm like oh you know i like twist my ankles all the time and the, like, the average waiting time is like three hours to, yeah to, it's just like it's like, oh, this is going to be bad. Yeah. So I'm like, I just don't, you know, I never move here because of your health system and because it terrifies me that I have friends and they're doing GoFundMe pages because their child has cancer. Yeah. I wouldn't, 
ever want to wish that on someone where your child is sick and then you have to worry worry about how you're going to pay for your sick child on top of the child being well, this sick. Well, is, and... this is the problem. You have, you know, depending on what type of job, like I have health insurance, yeah. I have full health insurance. But you still have to co-pay, don't you? So when you Yeah, go... but my co-pays are like $20. Oh, okay. They're you know, like, like they are minimal. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, my coverage covers like, like me and my wife. Yeah. And she, you know, when she, anytime she's had to go to the hospital, her payments have been for like, dollars yeah. it's like that's i think that's the most i've ever paid for anything yeah. you know same thing like like same thing with like our like dental is a whole other fucking nightmare you know for a lot of people and a lot of people are afraid of it and my, again i have full that i have yeah. full optical which i don't use because i don't like the choice of glasses <laughs> they give me um they're it's like all right i don't wear buddy holly frames yeah you know and that's all the usual choice you get but um yeah, it, it, that that's something the UK has completely right, and America does not. Yeah. And and you know, there's going to be people turn around and say, oh, well, you know, Obamacare. Like it's, yeah. it's like it's not Obamacare. Yeah. First off, it's you know the Affordable Health Care Act. Yeah. You know, it unfortunately, it doesn't work. Yeah. It it doesn't work. It you know a lot of the thing is with America especially, and I'm sure same thing with UK. It's a capitalist society. Yeah. It's a complete capitalist society, and what we wind up doing is a lot of doctors will not accept that. Yeah. So now you, your primary doctor, also now you have to go to some other fucking yeah. doctor, and it's terrible. Yeah. You know. And like it, that's to me, it's, it's like it's still all of that is insane. Whereas you know, like the fact that you even because me and a guy I used to know were um, talking about pay, and he would get roughly paid the, the same amount. And so we were talking about how, like, our income tax and how much we're taxed for national insurance. Yeah. And national insurance covers, like, the NHS and yeah. it also covers pensions as well. So, like, when you're older, yeah. you're, like, it's part of your pension plan. But, um, and it worked out that the amount of taxes and insurance we were paying was the same, but he didn't have health insurance. So it's kind of like, you're, you're, you're being stiffed, in my mind. A lot of people are being stiffed here. And, they, like... Like, it's very bizarre to see, like, drugs being advertised on TV, because we don't have that in England. It's not oh, allowed yeah. against the law. Uh, have you... I love the, uh, the quick disclaimer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like the depression. May cause, thing, yeah. may cause depression, suicidal yeah. thoughts, death. You yeah, know, you're I just like, like, oh, death is pretty fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's no coming back from that yeah, one. Yeah, and it's like, may cause depression. There's some depression. There's some antidepressant. How is it going <laughs> to cause more depression? depression? Like, what the hell? But, yeah, no, it's, but, it's more, I feel like, your health system is more money based yes. than ours is. Yeah. I think it's you know obviously the, the the more money you have, the better care you're gonna get. Yes. Whereas in England, everyone gets the, the same. same. It's everyone, no matter yeah. like even if you don't have a job, you can walk into any hospital and go. And my that's heart amazing. Hurts. That, and that's that's the model we should have picked up on. Yeah. I think a lot of people got turned off by because oh, then I'm gonna have to pay more taxes. You know what? I wouldn't mind paying more yeah. taxes if the service was going yeah. to be that you yeah. know it's just like anything else i wouldn't mind paying more taxes if it went for the right thing yeah but unfortunately you know things get skewed yeah. off into yeah. other other person's pockets yeah. so to speak and you're just like what the fuck and like you look at like even with the nhs because the, the nhs is severely underfunded like the government is the government in power at the moment is they, they basically have like a, they're trying to privatize it whereas you can't privatize a, you know a national like free health care it's not it's never gonna happen because to it, it, in England it's not how we work we'd all just leave and go to Germany or something yeah. to be like, <laughs> like I'm not staying here we've already left the yeah. European Union but that was one of the reasons why I didn't I voted against Brexit because yeah. European law generally has socialized med, med, you know medicine and it's yeah. and it's what it is and to me as I said some guy worrying about how he's gonna fund his child's chemotherapy is heartbreaking. Yeah. It's like, it's completely heartbreaking. And I don't get how, how, how it works. I don't understand how, you know. I don't think anyone I, really actually understands yeah. it fully. There's so yeah. much legalese in it that, you know, you have to have a team of people yeah. working on it to explain it to you. And even then you go, I think I'm dumber. Yeah. You know, yeah. from hearing all this, you know, because it's just so much 
back and forth legalese, as a, we call it. Uh, ugh, whatever. Yeah. I want to speak about... <laughs> Tyrell Jr. Yes, he is smaller than the last Tyrell. He is a lot smaller than the last Tyrell. Um, anyone who knows Meg, right, <laughs> knows that she goes around with a little rubber ducky. This this is actually her second one. Yeah, this is my second one. You lost... You lost Tyrell at some point last lost, time you came to New York. Yeah, I lost Black and Blue. Yeah. I lost Black and Blue. I, you know, and... After the guy threw up in my hair, so it was... It, it, it was meant to be, I guess. Yeah. Um, but Tyrell has more Instagram followers than most... How many is he up to now? I think it's 1,300 followers. <laughs> I have 500 and change, you know? <laughs> that, that, Follow Tyrell. For, for, for Rubber Ducky. But... <laughs> Basically, how did this all start? You basic. Oh, well, let me explain what you do first off. Um, I, Tyrell will take pictures with anybody. Yeah. You, you basically, I've seen him take pictures from everyone, from like Paul Bearer. Yeah. To, to, oh, I got a really good one of Paul this yeah. year. It's brilliant. Yeah, it, it, it's just like and Paul like looked yeah. at it like uh, yeah, like Fat Mike yeah. from No Effects, and just like a ton of other people. And then I think I became aware of you taking pictures. Because I just one day you took a picture of, like with it on a PA speaker. Yeah. You know, and it probably a sick of it all show. Yeah. You do love your sick of it all. I love them more than anything. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> and it was just like Tyrell, you know, in the foreground, and then like sick of it all going off in the back. I was like, okay, that's for in the picture. You know, and then it was like, oh wait, there's a whole thing about this. Yeah. And I was like, and you know, and I was like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, holy shit. You know, it's like. Really? That person? That person? That person? Juliet Lewis was my favorite. Like Juliet Lewis actually? Yeah. Really? And I went up to Juliet Lewis and went, can you please take a picture with Tyrell? And she was like, looked around and looked at me like, who's Tyrell? Tyrell. And I was like, here's Tyrell. And she just kind of looked at me and went, sure, of course, whatever. Yeah. I was like, excellent, thanks. And then later on she came up to me, it was all backstage at Grose Rock. She yeah. came up to me later on and she's like, where's the duck? I miss him. I was like, oh my God, I love you so much. <laughs> You are like, I love you so much right now. I mean, how did this start, though? I mean, the, like, seriously, was it just something you, like, randomly did one day with friends? or well, just? I basically would go on these trips, yeah. like, away to Europe, and then I'd come back and I'd have, like, one fellow. It's like, to, to show that I'd been to yeah. Europe doing something. And so I went, I was staying in a hotel in Germany, and the original Tyrell was in the shower and it was like oh you can take this duck home and i was like you know be cool because i started it off as i want to go up to like band people that i really admire yeah and just get them all take the picture with this duck and so i started doing that and i was like actually no i don't just want it with band people i want it with people that make me laugh people that yeah. like you know people that have come into my life and i think they're awesome i want a picture with the duck and it became a thing everyone's like why do you call him tyrell i was like i don't know he just he looked like a tyrell what, it wasn't a Game of Thrones thing? No, it wasn't. It's really? Cool. Yeah. That's what a lot of people, I'm sure, I, I, that's what I said. Yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was before Game of Thrones. Oh, really? Yeah. This goes back that far? Yeah, so the original Tyrell I got, I think, in 2006, oh, yeah. 2005. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've been, like, walking around with him for a very long time. I was destroyed when I lost the original one. I was so upset. I was like... I like was literally. Yeah, no, I, I I saw your posts on social media. You were a crush. Yeah, I you was were crushed. Like, I was like. I was super bummed out. But, but then generally the the rule is that I cannot buy my own duck. So this is from my friend John Wren from right. Philadelphia because he knew I was super upset. So yeah. he got me a new duck. So this is Tyrell Jr. Uh, a lot smaller. A little smaller, yes. Yeah. But you know, travel size. Yeah, exactly. He's travel like, size. My, the rule, the, there's one rule with him, and it's don't put him in your mouth. Generally, people choose to ignore that and put them, and I'm a bit like. Ugh. Well, yeah, we were talking about this before. Someone actually had cut one in half yeah. just to show you what's inside of it, and yeah. it was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, I mean, even he's getting a little funky. I could see, yeah. <laughs> you know, around the edges here, and there's. The little tip on the way. I do need to clean him, but he's like he's pretty new. So I got him. Uh, I didn't have a duck for all of last summer. I was very upset, and I got him last October. It, 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 it is fairly interesting though, because like I said, ev everyone seems very like amused yeah. and like oh sure, yeah, sure, you know, like. And it's the other thing is it's not it's not like people don't like it's much. I think it's cooler than going up to someone and go, can I have a photo with you? I don't want to be in a photo. I want the duck to be in a photo. <laughs> and just, Fair enough. And it's kind of, you know, it, it's an icebreaker as well. Because, like, 
people yeah. always ask me about it and I'm a bit like oh it's Tyrell and I tell them the story but he's yeah he's, he's just like my little mascot I yeah, no, it, 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 it's it's actually a very good idea. Yeah, you know, it, it's it, and it makes you take it's pictures. So, yeah. it, it's so simple. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, like, that's what it is. It's so like, simple. So many people hate hate the duck. Do like they? I have friends that are just like get rid of that fucking duck. Just stop. Like put the duck away. And I'm like, nope. I'm totally going up to Juliet Lewis and asking her to take a picture <laughs> with the duck, and it's not going to be a thing. But yeah, I have pictures with like pretty much everyone in the duck because yeah. I just I literally just go around. Going up to people, going, "Can you take a picture with my duck?" And they're like, "Sure, sure. yeah, of course." I took one with Mike Dijon. It was great. Mike Dijon and Mackie. This time, it was brilliant. Why? What did they do? What they was just the all, they just all looked at me like Mackie's like, "I'm sure I've done this before." I was like, "Yeah, you have, but I want one with both of you guys in it." So. <laughs> yeah, my, Mike's a pisser. Yeah, Mike's a pisser. I, I've known Mike for a very, very long time. He gets better with age. Oh, I love him. He's great. He mm. really is. And like it was, I was so stoked that I saw Crown of Thorns with Mike. Like, because yeah. when they Crown of Thorns did Europe, it was basically Scarhead. Yeah. And so it was like it was like this is cool, and I love Crown of Thorns, but like Dijon is Dijon. It's like yeah. Yeah. You gotta you know you've gotta have Dijon in Crown of Thorns. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that I saw them this weekend with him was and I went up to him and I totally gushed I was like you're my second favorite guitar player in the whole world <laughs> and he sort of like looked at me like who's your first I'm like Todd Jones <laughs> Todd, oh, wow. Todd Jones <laughs> yeah we uh... Todd Jones is the best guitar player in hardcore he like he's been every band every band he touches it turns to gold Ooh, I, you know, I, I think I... you're like ah oh, no nah, Todd you <laughs> Oh, no, Todd, yeah, but... Todd, Todd you know what it is? Todd, you, for, if, for on a musician standpoint, yeah. like, me looking at another musician, it's kind of like, same thing with, let's say, like, like Craig Satari. Yeah. Craig Satari... Best bass player in the world. He, oh, yeah. hands down. Yeah. He, he, he's beast. Yeah. You know, he's he's totally beast. Nicest fucking guy. I've I've been... All of Sickerville are literally they like we became friends because I used to follow them around. Yeah. And I would sleep in train stations. And they were like, You you can't do that. I was like, well, why not? Uh -huh. Yeah. They're like, it's not safe. I was like, Yeah, I know. They were like, Well I was like, What what else do you want me to do? They were like, We have a lounge on this nightliner, you can come so they started taking me with them. Which was like way better than, you know. Yeah. And, I'd and I am I'm, I'm sure there was shit talking about that as well because oh, people well, of are course. petty. Of course. Petty. I actually but that there are people like that who really do give a fuck. Yeah. You know, those guys are genuine, yeah. Yeah. Gen, genuine guys. They're I mean, amazing. They're like a couple of like the best guys I know. Yeah. yeah. And, and the fact that it's like, it's kind of funny. I don't know if I'm sure you saw the B incident at the recording studio with Jerry Farley. No. Oh, go. I'm sorry, Jerry. I'm about to blow you up. Yeah. Um, and, you know. Like Jerry has engineered the last like two records. Two yeah. records. Now this is his third. I think he's also now producing this. Yeah. So, and I've known Jerry since like the mid '90s. I met him actually. Uh, funny enough, me and him met the first time we actually met. You know, we had sort of met before, but the first time we really like bullshit. We we both sang backups on a shutdown. Yeah. Shutdown turning the tide record. Which we both did completely stoned. Yeah, well, maybe. which is like we both were giggling like little fucking school kids, and we're like, we're sick of back up stone on a straight edge record. This is great. That's awesome. You know, yeah. and, and and to this day, when I, if I ever that comes in on in my mix, I start laughing <laughs> because I could I can hear his voice and my voice very clearly, and I'm just thinking to myself, oh my god. We, I, I, it took probably longer for them to do the fucking backup vocals because we would do a take. Yeah be in hysterics you know and because we would listen to mark and he would say certain words and we would just pick on mark for his his vocals you know just because he, he was like 16 17 yeah. at the time and we were already in our like you know early 20s and we just like <laughs> you know and like like like, like this yeah. you know like yeah <laughs> but yeah I, it's amazing fucking that jerry now is like you know, it's his third fucking time. Yeah, Jerry, I love Jerry. Je Jerry is good people. He he's actually. I met come him home at the um, the last Sigurdsson video that they did, Road Less Traveled. I happened to be in New York when they were filming it, so I got like they were like, "Oh, come down, we're gonna do this video," and I was like, "Sick! This is brilliant!" I like, and yeah. I met. But if you watch Jerry, he's holding a plate of pasta, and he's moshing yes. with this plate of pasta. We took I think twelve fifth because it's it's just one continuous shot. It's yeah. like. 
So we did we did that shot about like I think it was about fifteen times. By the end, Jerry was like, I never want to eat pasta again. Because he was literally just sat there like. Spinning. Yeah, it wasn't like he got a new bowl of pasta. Exactly. Yeah, he, he was just like, Ugh. he was like, oh, I'm done with that. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to eat pasta anymore. It was great. Like that's the thing. Those guys are like my brothers. They yeah. really are. They look after me like they're my big brothers. And I, you know, I've seen the world because of them. Yeah. Because like I will travel pretty much, you know, anywhere to go watch them. And like watching them is the only band that still gets the hair on the back of my neck to stand up. Well, they because, still they bring that A game. Yeah. And they bring that A game ferociously. Yeah. I mean, they've never you know? broken up, so they you know they've no, been they, playing they, for like. I don't think they've ever had a point where they took a hiatus. Yeah. Like, a, Agnostic Front took a hiatus yeah. for a little bit. Madball did as well. Madball took a hiatus, yeah. and and Murphy's Law, they actually Murphy's Law has been continuous, but like I spoke to Jamie, I was like, oh my god. Because I, when I sat down and talked to him about this, I, was, I said, I, I know a lot about Murphy's Law, and me and Jimmy have hung out before yeah. and whatever, and, and partied and whatnot. But I was like, I just had to go to your Wikipedia page, and the fucking the list of fucking Bad members. members. Yeah, that's the thing. I've been offered to play yeah. Murphy's. Like, I'm good with that yeah. because I'm, I'm just gonna be one of the many, you know. And I was like, I was like, dude, you've had like fucking like. A hundred band yeah. members. I was like, it's always been you. you yeah, know? they don't play Stay Gold. They should play Stay Gold more often. That's my favorite Murphy's Law song. They, they, they're, they're still a fun band. Yeah, they're brilliant. They're, they're, I they're, love them. I they're love still fun. Them. Jimmy Jimmy is very characteristic. Yeah. You know, like he just he just has that thing people are drawn to yeah. him. And it's the same thing like like Paul Barrett is another one. Yeah. You know, it's like. You know, Paul Barrett doesn't mean to be funny. Yeah. He's just a sarcastic bastard. You know, he just he says what's on everyone's mind and it tends to be witty and it yeah. tends to be fast. Yeah. You know, he tends to think on his feet and you go, Wow. I was like, he, that just came out of his mouth. Okay. He, um, we went to see Sheer Terror in I think it was An was it Antwerp? Yeah, it was Antwerp in Belgium somewhere. And um it was the first like big Sheer Terror show that come through in years and it was it was brilliant. But um at one point there was some guy heckling Paul, telling him to like like just sing the songs and stop talking and Paul just turned around and looked at the guy and went I don't tell you how to do your job at McDonald's so don't tell me how to fucking do mine I was like yes yeah that's he, the best diss he 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 he's I've heard some classic uh Paul Bear lines over the years and you know it's just like he's like your grumpy uncle I love him he's great he, he, he's like your grumpy I, yeah. I saw the other day I was flipping through photos and there's a picture of like I think like like Jimmy and a couple other people and Paul's off to the side yeah. and he looks like like your grumpy uncle at Thanksgiving you know and, and it's just like that's just Paul yeah you know it's just Paul it's like that's how he is yeah um, he's great he's brilliant would your life be different if you didn't have hardcore music oh yet? yeah oh yeah well, what do you think you would be up to at this point if you weren't if I wasn't into hardcore I'd probably be normal and like have like a have like a career normal, though? and like you know actually like have some money, but like that's the thing. As hardcore has given me so much, like and that's why like the I got into hardcore like that show was in ninety seven. Yeah. I was doing shows in ninety eight, so I like quite quickly started becoming an active part of like you know yeah. the scene. So it's, I've always wanted to contribute and give something back because it's given me so much. Like I've seen the world. Like yeah. I like go to you know I've gone everywhere to watch bands. And it's just like, oh yeah, I'll just... I haven't been to Japan yet though, have you? No, I have not been to But that's far. That's too far. It's further from me. Yeah. Than it is for you. And that's a, that's on the list, but I told Michelle, I was like, listen, when we go to Japan, we're also going to go to Australia. Yeah. And New Zealand. Because yeah, yeah, like, it, it's the... right all there. I'm not yeah. taking that. For us, it's about a 22 hour plane ride. Oh my God. And, and I'm like, yeah, I'm doing that once. Yeah. I'm, like... not, I'm not doing that multiple times. Do you still book shows or no? I help out. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't book my own shows anymore. I don't. Too bad. It, yeah, like Ninja Fest. When we did Ninja Fest, Ninja Fest was at its prime. It was awesome, but the stress, like the last two we did, they, you know, it wasn't worth the stress because no one looked like they were having any great time. So. Well, the the problem also is this fucking. You know, you're dealing with budgets because I yeah. remember when I was in District Nine, you were trying to get us to come over yeah. there, and and I was I was totally like. If you can find a way to get us there, yeah. I don't give a fuck about getting paid or yeah. this or that. We'll figure out where to crash. Yes. We'll come over, we'll play the show, whatever. You know, and it just never happened. Yeah, it didn't happen. You know, and then I think you had them try to play again and that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> it, we it, actually announced them and they never, 
it didn't it didn't happen. I it was just like, pan, oh. never panned out. That sucks. Yeah. One day. Yeah. One um, day. But yeah, I mean, at, so that's it. No more shows. But you still you write for. Uh, yeah, I write for Down for Life, and the guy that runs the Underworld, I sometimes get him supports for hardcore bands. Yeah. But other than that, I'm like. I just it's my my show days are pretty much over and I, I generally I mean the last two shows I did by myself were six years ago now so yeah wow. it's been a, it's been a, like a real long time and I um I only did them because I refuse if I'm doing a show I refuse to tell guarantee more money than I can pay out of my pocket so I like I think I did like who was it, it was bitter end and they, I, we only had a guarantee of 150 pounds yeah. they, but they really wanted the London show but I ended up paying them way more cause, but I just you know but you're being real about yeah. it you know it's like I it, when we used to play shows people would guarantee you money and then you get there and the, the guarantee is not there yeah. just be honest about yeah, it exactly, yeah exactly you know and just be honest it's like and some people don't like that forwardness yeah I think that's the thing I, I was always saying to, and you know the, the bands I put on are my friends bands yeah. so you know, they contacted me and said, can we do, I think the, the other one was Gravemaker, who are great from Canada. But it's just like, I just don't, I don't, you know, I'm not going to tell a band I'm going to pay them more money than I actually have. Yeah. You know, so if two people turn up, then I can actually pay out of my pocket. And £150 is probably the most I could probably pay, even now. But like a lot of bands want huge guarantees, and I'm a bit like, yeah, no, that's no. not happening. That's well, not. it's like... You're not fucking Morrissey. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, like, like... unrealistic guarantees. I'm a bit like, uh, and yeah, you're not going to pull that many people, so... Well, you got to be real yeah. with people, that's yeah. all. You're not going to pull that much, so I would have to have... Because, you know, you obviously work out with how much you're charging on the door and whatever. Yeah. And it's kind of like you're not going to pull enough. Like, even with the best supports, even with Knuckle Dust, you probably wouldn't fill the room up. <laughs> so... Well, it's economics 101. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I loved, I love doing shows, like... When when we you know when I do shows and they're packed and like it's it's just a brilliant feeling because everyone yeah. looks like they're having a really good time, but it just kind of I don't have the money at the moment. So. Do you think uh, the way now that the internet runs things, it's changed when you first oh. got into it? I mean I I mean I've seen the difference. Yeah. It went from handing someone a flyer like, you know, come to yeah. the show, come to the show, come to the show, or here's my demo yeah. to now, you know. Facebook the, events. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's like th and I've done quite a few of those where you know you book a facebook event and played a couple of ones that we've sold it out you yeah. know when you go and you scratch your head and you go this is all from just a fucking facebook event. yeah like, you know it's like uh, it's not beating the street because i remember i would go to so many more shows yeah when i had a show to promote because i'd go outside on the line yeah hit, go early go down the line give everyone a flyer give everyone a yeah. demo or a, you know or stickers or whatever and it's a completely different world nowadays like we, you we, we've talked about this before and i've talked about other people the internet sort of has leveled the playing field it's too much information yeah. now it's too i think that the thing is now whereas before in england we would only hear about the really good hardcore bands yeah so like you know you would like we'd hear we I, I my thing was i used to read thanks lists yeah. I used to speak to, there used to be a guy called Lil who ran a distro called House on Name Records. He would always tell me what to listen to. It was great. And I would band shirt. So when bands came over, if they were wearing another band shirt, I would always check out the bands that they were wearing the shirt from. Now it's just like everyone can just tour Europe. Like every, there are some bands that come over and I'm like, no one cares, dude. Like, well, that's another thing. I just, yeah. uh, before, uh, we're going to end this soon, but... I always found it weird because there were bands who went to Europe. I don't want to again. Don't want to mention any yeah, names, of but they would go to Europe constantly, but they couldn't get arrested here. Yeah, you know, and it was like, and I used to see there was a difference, like from the MAD. Yeah. To the guy who was the promoter, yeah. he owned the van, he owned the equipment. Yeah. He would charge the band for the van and the equipment, yeah. and the band would basically only make money off of their merch. Yeah. And I was like, and I was like. And I say this to people like, well, anybody could tour Europe if you find the right fucking yeah, exactly. guy yeah, yeah. to do it. I was like, my big thing, we, I, I never toured Europe is because I wanted to tour the United States. Yeah. I want to do my own backyard. Yeah. Most people will never get past Pittsburgh. Yeah. You know, that's as far as they get and, you know, maybe the occasional fly out date for something. Yeah. And I was just like, I was like, that's too easy. Yeah. You know, get in the van. And it's different nowadays because gas costs a lot yeah. more money. 
you know, it just... That's the thing as well, like, when we did Ninja Fest, like, when we first started, like, we put, booked one of Terra's first shows in the UK. Yeah. And, you know, the guarantee now for... And we would... We, the thing, we would be proud of the fact that we were getting up-and-coming bands. Yeah. And bands are just starting out. And we, you know, we had, like, a, all three... Because it was three girls that did the fest. And, you know, we'd always get, like, people saying, talking shit. But it's kind of course. like... Yeah, because, like, three girls, there's, you know... How are three girls running this? But who's blowing who? Yeah, exactly, yeah. pretty much. And I'm like, yes, because I go to this much effort to do that. That's you know, I, I really don't have time. <laughs> but, but like, it's it was the guarantees were much less, so we would be able to bring over better bands, and we would be able to. But now it's just kind of every band ever tours all the time, and there are too many fests. I think, I think that you know, that there are just everyone wants to put like every show has like ten bands on it. Yeah. Like I'm like I don't want to stand and watch Nobody their bands. Does. Especially the, like I'm 39. I don't look 39, but I'm 39. Yeah. And like I don't want to, like four bands on a Monday night is enough. Like you don't need to put six bands on. It's like, and then what what usually happens is, you know, the last band will come on at 10:30, and then I get to watch like three songs, and then have to go home before like because I live on the other side of London and yeah, I've got yeah. work at five in the morning. So yeah, it sucks. But yeah. I think, you know, I think the internet has, we used to have, because we would have to search for music, I feel like our generation of hardcore kids care more yeah. than the kids now. Like, I find the hardcore kids, the younger ones, because they are spoon-fed everything. Yeah. And like, bands that are not very good are huge. Yeah. Where you're just like, why? Like, this band is not, there is nothing. When I watch a band for the first time, I want something to stand out. There has to be something, like a certain riff or something, where I go, oh, that's really, really good. But, like, you don't get that much anymore. Just kind of average, you know, some little rip off still. Yeah, the, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. That's, and it's just, you know, everyone wants to be in a band and everyone wants to. That's the other thing. Everyone goes, why aren't you in a band? I'm like, I can't play guitar, can't drum, and I cannot sing. I'm a terrible singer. <laughs> so, like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to start a band for. Nothing, and then... The problem is, too, I think the bigger problem I see with, you know, the younger generation is also they tend to be a little bit more spoiled. Yeah. You know, again, we, we you know, we grew up without having cell phones, yeah. without having a smartphone, without having the internet, and you had to go and find yeah. everything. And, and that was part of, like... We used to have to phone up when I was doing shows in 98. I actually have a flyer from the first show I did. Um, it was a knuckle dust show. And on the bottom of the flyer it says, for info, please call. So people would phone up my house asking about the show. Or like, it was, yeah, that's the sort of thing. And I would phone up bands to like get book them, not yeah. like email them or anything. It was so like, it was so much harder. That's the, the good point of the internet is I could just email someone now and go, oh, you yeah. Know? It, that, yeah. Getting in contact with someone's a lot, lot yeah. easier than it was back then. You know, like, oh, he's not in? You know, and then, yeah. then you'd wait like three or four days yeah. and you're like, oh yeah, I just got your message, yeah. you know, because my mom's a fucking bitch. Um, <laughs> Don't talk what, badly about your mother. <laughs> did, did, um, what, do you, what do you hope to see with the future of hardcore music? I, you know what, it's, I, don't, I don't want anything really to change. I want kids to care more. Like, I just think, and, like, the thing is, the, the only problem, I love hardcore, like I said, yeah. it's, like, maybe travel the world, it's, like, yeah. I have the best friends because of my, the music I'm into, but at the same time, I do think the one thing that I would change is the bitchiness about it, and, like, the, you know, like, I'm 39, I'm really not putting bands on so that I can blow them, like, that sort <laughs> yeah, of thing. Yeah, that's and I've had, Yeah, I've had, like, I've had things like that sent to me, and I'm, like, I'm not, and if I was a groupie, I would not be a groupie for a hardcore band. I'd be Iron Maiden's groupie, <laughs> or like someone big, <laughs> like you know, someone that I can go out in the real world and go, oh my god, that you know, you know Iron Maiden. Yeah. Whereas you know, I'm not. I'm not. You're like who? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Who? who are you? Yeah, you're. And I'm like, I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty good girl. I don't generally fight anyone. I'm like, I don't bitch about anyone. I just wish people were a bit nicer. Yeah. That's all. That like you know, and they like everyone's so concerned with things like crowd killing, or like yeah, and it's just kind of a bit like. Uh, like I don't. I don't things. understand the crowd killing thing. To no, I don't get life. it either. Because if someone did that to me, I'd knock them out. You know, the, the crowd, the crowd killing thing really. When I saw that start coming around, and that that crowd killing really start coming around, 
by the time I was, you know, stepping off to a, for a little while, yeah. and I was like, okay, you're just, you're just basically attacking somebody, you know. Yeah. I mean, there was always the, even back in there, there was always the cheap shots. That yeah. that that would happen. But this is like more than cheap shots. Yeah. This is like like actively sussing out somebody. Yeah. And fucking beating yeah. them, you know. And I was like, okay. You know. It's like, because, you know, there are certain, I, I have this thing where in London there are certain venues, in every venue I have a spot, because I'm only five foot one, yeah. I have spots where I can see the band, yeah. like, it, you know, people generally won't be in front of me or like, whatever. I never, very rarely stand at the front because, you know, as my legs show, I bruise very easily. So, yeah. so um, generally stages in my legs don't work very well. But at the same time, it's kind of like, it's kind of like if I'm stood on the side watching a band and some twat comes over and starts like punching me in the head, I'm going to punch him right back in the face and like kill him probably. Maybe I shouldn't say that as an Arab. That's probably not the best thing to say. We know what you mean though. Uh, yeah. We know what you mean. Well, May, it was a pleasure to talk to you. It was it, fun. It, thank it, you. No, thank you very much. And uh, have fun on the rest of your US trip. Thank you. All right.